Welcome to the Agent 251 Podcast, the real estate show that looks deep into the work and culture at JWRE, Jason Will Real Estate, in Mobile and Baldwin Counties. Jason, Agent 251, investigates and spills the beans on his case closing clues and industry secrets for motivating agents while educating buyers and sellers. Hey everybody, I'm Jason Will with JWRE. I am joined today by Hunter Harrelson of Beach Ball Properties. Hunter, what does Beach Ball Properties do? Well, Jason, Beach Ball Properties is a vacation rental and property management company that serves the Alabama Gulf Coast and maybe one day beyond that. Um, we manage condos, duplexes, houses, anything that a renter that's coming to the Alabama coast needs, we take care of. Um, I kind of feel like we're a twofold business because we deal with the rental side of it and the renters and, and making sure their vacation is great and wonderful and don't have any issues. We also manage the uh, managed side of it for your owners, the people that don't live down here, but they have a condo that they want to come enjoy a couple times a year, but they want to make revenue off of it, but they also don't want all the headaches they have to put up with. They can give it to us and we can manage it that way. So it's it's really nice for us as far as a referral business. We can be referred either way and still earn income our way to make our business grow and be more successful. How, how do you keep your sanity in the property management <laughs> business? <laughs> I've got a very great wife and, and as of right now, a great employee, Jeremy, that, that helps. But there are some trying, trying days. There are some days that you wake up and there's just 50 emails and you're looking, you're like, Oh my God, this is just one at a time, one at a time. I guess you would have to just make peace with the fact that when these people, like when the, they're on vacation, if something goes wrong, they're not really mad at you. You can't take it personally. Right, right. Like it, they're just like, they're frustrated. You just got to kind of let that roll off. You can't take it personally, right? That's right. And you know, we put a lot of procedures in place. I, I work every day to try to minimize those things, minimize those complaints, make sure things are taken care of. But you know, it's the world. Things are going to happen. doesn't matter how hard you try. And that's what my wife always is telling me. She said, Hunter, I know you want to perfect things, but you can't. Do it the best you can. Get up every day. As my dad used to say, pull both bootstraps up and go to work. I love it. I love it. All right. So the hottest topic in terms of content in the real estate industry right now is how as we as industry professionals, how can we help people that are watching our target audience make money, save money, and solve a problem? Now, I feel like there are a lot of people out there, especially, you know, we've got these big feeder states. I'm sure you see it, like Louisiana. There's a ton of people that come here from Louisiana and buy and sell condos. But there is even a bigger market out there, people that want to get into this. The past three years, there has been a ton of coverage on how the vacation rental market is just booming. But people don't know how to do it. They, they think it's a too big of a risk or how do they fill it? How do they fill the calendar with bookings and how do they manage it in August when the, the AC goes out? And wow. so that's where you guys come in. But really somebody could walk through the door here and say, Hunter, I, I've got this amount of dollars in my savings account or my RA. I want to put that in a property down here that generates a six to 8% return. Is that realistic? It is realistic, Jason. And I'll kind of tell you, you know, one of the things that's different about beach ball is we don't actually actively market market as real estate agents. I am a licensed real estate agent. If families or friends come in and tell me, hey, help me buy something. But I still rely a lot on y'all to get that front end because y'all are the experts. Y'all know exactly what's going on. I can do more on the rental side, but I'll kind of break this down and piece it apart. Please. The first thing to do is you've got the buyer that comes to an expert like you, Jason Will, and they ask you, hey, look, I'm looking in this market. What can you help me out with? Well, if you're a new agent to the business or a seasoned agent, come to me. Say, what are the hot complexes? What, where are you getting the most rentals? What are you seeing? Where are the trends? Where are we getting the most return from? I'll break down the complexes for you. Maybe they've sent you four or five that they like. I'll tell you, this is the winner. This is the loser. This is the one that you need to go with. This has got the best return on it. I, love I, do, I do projections for my agents. Um, I always project on the gross. A lot of people ask me why I don't do the net. And I said, well, the reason I do the gross is... I know from a business standpoint what a complex will generate, what somebody is willing to pay to stay for a week in June at that complex. Now, I don't know who you're going to go with at the end of the day. I don't know if you're going to go with me or one of my competitors or if you're going to try to attempt to do it on your own. I don't know what your net's ever going to be, but I know what it will withstand. So I give you that gross, and I'll tell you, I've got a 10% rule, Jason. You bring me a condo, and let's say it's listed at 350000 if it's not going to at least gross, or I don't comfortably feel like it'll gross 35000 which is 10%, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you to nix the idea. The math, it's magical. It always seems to work out. on right. 
If you're financing and you put the mortgage out there, we can pretty much cover your mortgage payments. So what that a lot of times will do, I always say there, there's really two, maybe three different types of buyers out there. The first buyer is the person that's just buying a condo, they're paying cash for it, or they're financing and never going to rent it out. The second person is the person that's going to finance it. Now, I'm always a big proponent of leveraging other people's money. If you can leverage someone else, you know, that's just what my dad taught me in business. You leverage it out there and make more. The way you're really going to gross on that is you get that thing out there. You try to get your payment down. Let's try to make you enough money that you cover your HOAs, you cover your insurance, and you cover your mortgage. You can get that return on it. Some are going to get a better return. Some are going to be more break even. Boy, you really make money, Jason, on the back end is 10 years from now, you go sell that thing. You sell it and say you paid three fifty, you put twenty percent down, you got it paid down to maybe two hundred thousand, now it's worth four hundred and fifty. You just had somebody pay your mortgage and you just made two hundred and fifty thousand dollars off of it. Right. So that's a great way to kind of turn that money in, in ten years to make two hundred and fifty thousand off of what you invest in it. You know, I'm not running numbers specifically right now, but that is something I'm happy to do with any agent. Um, another thing I do for my agents is if somebody comes in and says, look, they're just really teetering, Hunter, and they're just really nervous, and I, I really need somebody to hold their hand, I'll come in and help you make the clothes. I'll come in and, and break it all down and hold that person's hand. Done that for several agents and still paid a referral fee to them at the end of the day. So, you know, it works out for you. So it's a good relationship back and forth. At the end of the day, I want to take care of your customers or any agent's customers that they know when they go to deal with beach ball properties that they're taken care of and they don't call you back going, Jason, why did you send me over to Hunter, da 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 da, da and carry on. Right. And then as far as when that carry-on process goes, we deal with those late-night phone calls. We deal with those air conditioner units. We deal with those water leaks, everything else. And I have found... You know, one thing a lot of people struggle with in the summertime is finding good contractors. Everybody gets so busy because it's just the summer season. Yeah, how do you I, solve that problem? I, the good Lord has, has put me in place with a good list of a few contractors that I have narrowed down that I can call. And they answer my calls and they get back to me and usually get to me during the day. It's been amazing who we have found. And I don't want to give all my secrets right. away. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. who I've gotten. We found ones that have reasonable service fees. and. I've got two or three guys I know I've called before, and they've gone out and looked at something and not charged me a service fee, which is something I kind of believe in, too. I believe it's kind of gotten almost a little wild, wild west down here, $45 just to open the front door. You know, what is what is all your other stuff, you know, built in? Like like my 18% that I charge for management covers air filters. It covers loose doorknobs. It covers batteries. Um, if your shower liner rips or gets mold on it and needs to be changed out, I'll change that out for you. If your light bulbs go out, we'll change it. And I don't charge you for the materials or for my time. You know, I feel like I've structured my business in a way that I can still be profitable and make money with you, not off of you. Now, how does that 18% differ from the industry averages? The industry average I'm seeing is somewhere around 20 to 22%. I've seen as high as if you get out to the Fort Morgan area, some as they call it the Fort Morgan tax, 28% wow. to manage out there. And I'm still standard at 18% across the board. You know, you can call it, it depends on your math. I'm an old financial advisor, not old by any means, but you used right. to be a financial yeah. advisor. You can say that that... 22% over 18%, the 4 over 18 is, you know, I'm nearly 20% lower. But some people would say at the end of the day, you're 4%. But still, I'm lower and I'm putting more money back into your pocket. So just to recap, you would say really the path to owning a successful vacation real investment, really the path is math. That's just right. like anything else. I mean, you, the numbers don't lie. I mean, it really is black and white. It, it really is, Jason. And, and that's why I feel like my financial advisor background really helps when I'm speaking with customers. I can really break down those numbers. I'm actually dealing right now with a, uh, a retired professional baseball player. He actually won a World Series ring in 2010 with the San Francisco Giants. Wow. And he's got, uh, I'd say he feels like he's got money to burn. He's looking at different investments here and there, and, and we're breaking down condos. And, and it doesn't always have to be a Turquoise or a Phoenix West or a Kareem. I mean, those are the big flashing ones everybody want to see. But you can buy something at Moonraker, or you can buy something at Crystal Shores, or you can buy something at Harbor Place across the road. It's about the math. Now, some people come to me, and it's not necessarily about making all the money. Maybe they want that Kareeb. You know, I've got because they want to stay because there. Because they want to be at the Kareeb. I've got one right now that's buying a Kareeb. Um, I think they closed around seven hundred eighty-nine thousand. Good. Great. Yeah. 
Now, it didn't fit the 10% rule, but to this particular customer, it didn't matter. Right. It's in the B building. It's on the six block. You can see the Gulf. You can watch the boats coming in and out. You can see Bird and Robinson Island. It's literally a million dollar view. Right. So to them, I've got the million dollar view. I come use this a couple times in the summer. The secret, y'all, is actually October down here. October really? at the beach. It's quieter down here. The weather's cooled down, but you can still get in the water. Um, that's when I tell all my owners to come in October. Y'all love it. Plus, you have shrimp festival going on. Uh, I think early November, which kind of, you know, that's not quite October, but you have the, what is it, Ginger, the Oyster Fest, uh, the Oyster Cook-Off. So yeah. A lot of things going on down here. Even September has the wine festival. So I love the fall at the beach. Me too. But to them, the guy's got money, or he and she have money. They can afford the place. They're going to make some other revenue on the side. So I can work with either one of your customers. You just... I need to know what is the bottom line. What is that black and white? What do you want to do? Because there's something for everybody down here. So I, I come to you and I say, Hunter, here's my budget. I either want to buy a condo or maybe I want to go down Fort Morgan and buy a house. I've heard some of those houses down there are grossing a hundred K for a duplex on the Gulf. Do you have any personal preferences in terms of the type of property? Not necessarily. I mean, I have found, if you can afford it, the best ROI, return on investment, is a house. A three to four to five bedroom house. And the reason being is, a lot of costs in this business scale are scalable. Taxes are scalable. Credit card fees are scalable. I mean, if you're paying a 3% credit card fee, it's still 3% on $5,000 as it is $500. But the clean fees and my fees typically seem to be that breaking point that what changes. With a cleaning fee, that's a set cost. So where a one-bedroom condo costs $90 to clean. It's just that's if you're going to pay a professional company to go in, clean it, inspect it, make sure all the maintenance issues. You know, The way my business works is they're my eyes and ears out there. They call me and we go out there and, and, and we take care of it. On a house, capping out at maybe $250, $260, maybe $300 to clean that. Well, if it's a six-bedroom house at $300, you would think, well, 90 times six, you know, that'd be 540 so there's that gap. There's that ROI gap. Right. But also, I have somebody that bought one in a Moonraker, paid their 20% down. I think he told me he's all in monthly, somewhere around seven to $800. So for the whole year, tax title and all, he's paying, what, eight or nine grand? Well, that condo is going to grow somewhere around 18 to 20. It's going to net somewhere around 12. So he's actually positive. He's actually making money on a one bedroom condo. So it can be done. Yeah. And that goes back to my whole, it, it, it's individual based on everything. Now, as far as your question about Fort Morgan, five years ago, I would have been a little uneasy about Fort Morgan, but Fort Morgan has got a new kind of blast of energy out there and, and not to give them any extra promotion because they're doing a great job at Sassy Bass. Uh -huh. Sassy Bass has a restaurant out there. They opened up a market. They opened up a little liquor store out there. Tacky Jack's has a restaurant out there. The Beach Club now during the summer has five or six food trucks with every different type of food. And the sports oh, I didn't bar. know that. Yeah, so you can now go out to Fort Morgan, be quiet, Bring your dog out on the beach. They don't have any specific dog calls out there. Also, Fort Morgan doesn't have the Gulf Shores Orange Beach city taxes. You're only paying county and state as an owner. So that's more net profit to you. Um, we've also noticed the spring breakers have started to gravitate out there too with a lot of the way the things, laws have changed ordinances here in the Gulf Shores. Right. Um, I wouldn't sell it over the other. I'd still say the, the best money are those West Beach houses. When you get down past Condo Alley and get in that 1200, 13, 1400 block of West Beach, those houses, I mean, they just, they print money. That's good advice. And it's really interesting, I think, the way you put yourself out there in terms of, of helping agents, because there are a ton of agents, new agents getting in the business right now. It's nothing. I mean, literally, we could do a Facebook Live video on condo investing. I can tag New Orleans the state of Louisiana, Baton Rouge, and I'll probably pick up a buyer. And I'm two weeks in. I have no idea what to do. So I think it's genius to just to put yourself out there for these agents going, I'm your I'm your resource. Mm -hmm. Let us focus on the contract, the negotiations. But in terms of the real investment side and making the numbers work. And I'm sure you can give them advice about how to furnish the unit and what what do people, what are your 
renters want to see? Like, do they want flat screen TVs in every room or, you know, what do they want? You can help them with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I will say, Jason, I kind of lean on my wife a little bit more yeah. on that because, uh, <laughs> she's made fun of me before I walk into a unit and say, yeah, this will rent. This is good. Got the couch, got the sleeper sofa and she'll go. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it, it, it's funny. I like to tell this story. We won a, I guess you called a contract with a specific owner. They were interviewing different people. We came in, we sat down with them, the couple, they were really nice, and you know, I'm giving my pitch and doing my whole uh, dog and pony show, and the wife stops and she looks up and she says, Ginger, what do you think about this fixture here? It's a big fan, kind of, you know, beachy, big wave looking thing, and Ginger looks at it and she goes, it's got to go. And she goes, I love you, gave Ginger a big old hug, and they said, y'all are the first ones that were honest with us oh, yeah. and told us that it needed to go. So many other people walked in there and said, no, 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 leave it be, leave it be. And we came in and were like, no, this is what, and, and they told us, we love y'all. They, they, when they come into town, they, uh, they're from Wisconsin, but when they come into town, they, they always got to dinner with us. We take them out, they take us out. Right. Um, and they're even thinking about buying another condo. Wow. You know, sometimes you just got to be honest with people and tell them you, know, you got to do these things. Now, in other scenarios, we've walked in and said, this is grandma's furniture. It's got to go. And they said, look, we get it, but we've stretched ourselves out on this. Mm-hmm. Wait till the end of the summer and we have some revenue and then we'll come in. And those are a little bit more of a challenge throughout the year, Jason, because we get the calls. This furniture, this, that we understand. We understand. Just give it some time. Give us a chance next year. It'll be a completely different place. But that's on us. That's right. Not, you know, that's, that's done. You know, your agent's already finished that off. We have to work that out and we have to sell that. All right. So make money, save money. I mean, you've, you've got the path as math to making money. It's all about what your customer, your client's budget is. That t- whole 10% rule. Saving money, you're at 18% where your competitors are as high as 28% or That's right. is that what we talk? Okay. And, and we don't charge a service or door door fee. A lot of my competitors charge $45 just to open the front door. Um, we don't do that. We'll go in and check an issue. I kind of joke with my customers. This is in the contract kind of written a little, I guess a little loosely. Good, good attorneys can work on that. But basically <laughs> I joke with them. If I have to go in there and have to sweat and buy a bunch of materials, we'll discuss what the price will be to work on something. But if the doorknob comes loose or something, We'll run in there and we'll tighten it up. We'll change that air filter. We'll take it. Pretty much anything an owner could do themselves, that's what that 18% is for. And I'll tell you why we got to that, Jason. Yeah. My family owns investment property down here, and we've dealt with some other companies. And we would pull out that monthly bill, and it would be $35 to change a light bulb, $65 to change an air filter. And it seems like these were every single month. Right. And like, I get air filters, but how are these many light bulbs going out? And, you know, you, and I hear the horror stories. People are coming in. Oh, I want LED bulbs. I don't want my light bulbs going out. I don't want you doing this. When I even had one customer tell me, they're like, you know, how do you, you know, how do I know it wasn't a leaky faucet? And you just charge me 200. Well, I'm very transparent inside my business, inside my software. I have all my vendors set up. So in the statement, you know that that check was cut directly to that vendor. I'm not paying myself and I'm not upcharging you for that vendor's work. But that's how we're keeping that cost down, and that's how we're transparent with our owners. We call or email every owner and tell them, look, this is what happened. There was a leaky faucet. They went out. They fixed it. They did this. They did that. It's not they're going to get their bill and go, what, what happened here? What happened here? What happened there? They know what's going on. That's just I've just always been an honest guy. That's the way I was raised. And, and because of our bad experience, you know, was it say businesses come out of necessity as the mother of all invention? That's what we felt. We felt it was necessary to have a business down here that didn't take advantage of people that way. All right. So what if I, and this this would appeal to some of the savvy condo owners, but maybe somebody who's just a novice who says, well, I'm going to save that 18%. I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> and I'm sure you've got a lot of experience where that has come back to bite people in the butt. Yes. We, we've had, you know, whenever we have people talk to us about that, I always tell them, I say, you, you'll call me next year. You'll call me back. Again, we're that line of defense for you. Yeah. We're taking care of things right there immediately when they happen. Who wants to be laying in bed or on vacation and they get a call that a vacationer is calling them and yelling and upset. And like you said, you can't take it personally, but they're still upset. You know, a lot of owners don't want to deal with that. A lot of owners don't know or have the knowledge of things that we know how to do. I mean, some owners, you know, we've got one owner that when I got at their house, they said, where's, where's your air filter? Where's your, where's your AC unit? And they just kind of looked at me like, huh? I'm going, how are you working your own house? You know, um, 
but we're the experts in that. And this is kind of another thing that ties into that is pricing. We, we know the pricing of these properties. A lot of owners will try to throw out and say, oh, charge this or, oh, I'm going to charge that. We know what the market will stand. And we also know how to negotiate with people and how to get the right price. And also we've got renters coming to us. If you're Billy Joe Bob in, in, in Louisiana, and you don't have any renters now to find you, you have to be dependent on VRBO or Airbnb or all these different places. And they're great platforms, but you have to pay money to be on all those as well. So really, at the end of the day, is not quite as cost effective, especially when you work with somebody like myself who doesn't just beat you over the head with fees. Well, can what if I come in and say, all right, well, I'm going to use Beach Ball, but I'm going to also put it on VRBO, and anything I rent on VRBO, I want a discount from Beach Ball. Right. How does now, that work? Now, we don't allow that, and okay. the reason being is because we have a specific property manager account. I'm actually, Beach Ball is a preferred partner with VRBO, so we get a lot of rate cuts and a lot of different things that we can do. So we don't want to really want to get you in the business of competing with our owners. However, to tie into that, let's say you're promoting it on Facebook, or let's say you live in Baton Rouge, and you're a doctor, and you've got... 150 patients and they know you've got that condo over at the creep if you send them to us and send us in writing like hey look Susie Q is going to be calling you I want to book our place they want this week I actually knocked the commission down to 12% on that one oh, wow. so I say you procured the client I'll give you a third off so for easy math purposes let's say the the base rent was a thousand dollars and I was going to charge you 18 180 if you sent me the client I'm only going to charge you 12 I'm only going to charge you 120 so you put a third of that money back into your pocket now, I imagine, I, just to rewind a little bit, it, we were talking about your vendors and how you're able to keep really quality people on hand because things happen at a moment's notice if the air conditioner goes out in the summertime down here. It's hot. Oh, yeah. you got to get on there. It doesn't matter if it's 4th of July or, or what day of the week it is. But I imagine your vendors, you keep them busy so they don't want to rock the boat with this relationship with That's you. Right. But if I'm Mr. Smith out of Baton Rouge and I'm just calling up people right and left... There's the opportunity, right? Like you said, for them to get taken advantage of because of cost, and also they don't have that accountability that you have with right. these vendors. That's right. That's, that's but you kind of sold it for me, Jason. Yeah. I, I, I don't really have much to add to that, but, that, but that's right. We actually have had scenarios like that. You know, my dad always said a story sells everything, right? We've had issues where we had a specific client that wanted to get some landscaping done. I've got a couple of landscapers. You know, one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I called him up and got his price. He goes, oh, that's too high. That's too high. He's dealing with me. He knows he's doing this almost as a favor to me. Don't need to do it. So he got on the phone for two weeks calling calling all these different landscapers. Nobody could get to him within three weeks. My landscaper was going to get to him within three days. Everybody else was a higher price. So he had to come back to me and kind of eat a little crow and say, Hey, will your guy, will your guy come back and come take a look? And he did. He went and took care of him. You know, similar issue with another uh, guy was putting in a pool. And I said, look, this, this is our pool people. This is who we use. Well, I'm going to get on the phone and call. Okay. Well, they circled the wagon, came back around, said, Hey, you still got the pool guy's number? I still do. Um, but that, you know, sometimes you have to learn your own lessons that right. way. But, but, but most of my owners, a lot of them just, Hey, Hunter, I, I know you know these people. Tell me who we need to use. I, I can understand if you're a novice to it and thinking, Oh, Hunter's probably getting a kickback or Hunter's probably making some money or Hunter's, you know, he's probably selling this specific guy. Well, you know, I can only sell my honesty so long, so far and so long. So that, that's what my whole story, and this is why I love doing videos and podcasts and things like this, is because I need my story to get out there. I need people to know that, that beach ball is, is cost effective and that we're honest and good folks. You know, it's hard to target the whole, basically I call it the V. Basically you go Louisiana, Arkansas, kind of up the Mississippi and up 65. Those two kind of roadway thoroughfares V all down to where we are. Anybody east of that probably goes over to 30A. Anybody, you know, we get some Texas folks, but they've got a little Texas speeches, and mm -hmm. everybody west is headed west. So, you know, we try to work that V, but my clients in Wisconsin, they, they, they love me. But how many people in Montauk, Wisconsin, have a beach con there at Beach Park? Right. So, so that's why I have to get that story out and let people know this is our honesty. This is what we do. You know, come give us a shot. You won't regret it. And we, we were talking off camera. You were saying if people are more than a two-hour drive away, it's really hard for them to manage their own properties. Right. Not that I'm trying to outsell myself, but if you lived over in Mobile or if you lived over in Biloxi and owned a condo here, you could probably get by on doing it. You still, at the end of the day, if something happens and you have to drive over here, you have to try to call somebody and find somebody. 
you know, it's, it's just like anything, uh, you know, Ginger T is being an attorney. Nobody needs an attorney until they need an attorney. And then when you get the attorney, you got to pay for the attorney. Well, this business is kind of the same way. You get in a bind and you got to find that AC guy and he's got to get down there right then there. You're going to pay his rate and you're going to pay what he wants to get your emergency done. Because as my dad always says, don't make your problem my problem. And when that happens, that's usually when the rate goes up. So that's why I say when we're here and we know what's going on, it's a, it's a lot more fluid and easier for us to take care of it than somebody two hours out. Even somebody, I mean, we have customers in, well, I have one customer from Daphne. Actually, two customers from Daphne. Really? Yeah, I mean, they could be down here in 45 minutes, but you know, they, they, they're like, I don't want to deal with it. This is, this is you. I would imagine it'd be a big selling feature to have Ginger, to have an attorney who's a co-owner, mm-hmm. you know, because if you need, you know, a little, oh yeah, <laughs> a little muscle. It. Yeah, and, and, and we are kind of the yin and yang. Um, you know, we play the good cop, bad cop. I'm, I'm the jolly guy that comes in and sells, and everybody likes Hunter and Ginger's kind of the no. This is, you know, how things need to be done. But she's okay with that role, and, and I think that's what makes us really sell is because we we understand our roles and we use those to our advantage. Don't want to get into couples relationship, but you know, a lot of couples sometimes try to make it a competition for us. It's it's not a competition. It's it's how can we use our resources together. Um, she will tell you she'll do a little contract review for you, but after you get to a certain point, she, she does have to turn that yeah. on. <laughs> I mean, we go to every city council meeting, so we know what's going on. We know where condos are going in. We know Brett Robinson's building two new complexes down here to the west side of Orange Beach. So we know about those things. A lot of people don't go to the council meetings or have an idea until the last minute, and then they want to get a little upset and mad and argue and fight and picket line and everything like that, but you just go and be informed. And you know, I tell a lot of people, like, you know, ask me questions. I, I know what's going on on this island down yeah. here. All right. So if I want to find a vacation to, uh, rental to rent for myself, or if I'm an agent who wants to get in touch with you and say, hey, I've got, I'm working with several condo buyers. I really need your help to help us, you know, put the numbers together and, and see which buildings are maybe the right investment for them based on their budget. Or I've just bought a condo and I'm interviewing management companies. How can folks out there get in touch with Hunter Harrelson? Our phone number is 251-968-8896. Our website is www.beachballproperties.com. We, we were discussed earlier. How great was that the domain name was available? It for was? We, it was available. We <laughs> only paid crazy. nine ninety nine dollars 99 for Beach Ball Properties. So. Um, now there is a funny little side story to that. I was talking to, I did dealt with GoDaddy and I said, man, it'd be awesome if I could just put Hunter at beachball.com. And he said, well, I think it's for sale. Beachball.com is for sale. I was like, how much? Well, I had to pay him a little broker fee to go out and look. And he said, I think it's a thousand dollars. I said, I'll pay a thousand dollars for beachball.com. Well, the next day he calls me back and said, Hunter, I got bad news. I said, what's that? He said, beachball.com is for sale for $35,000. I was going to say that's, and I said, no, you can have it. They can have it. And if you go to beachball.com, it's just a for sale sign. I mean, I guess they're hoping maybe one day. It's, somebody it's probably somebody will. Else, you know, you can go to beachballs.com. But, you know, the, the domain name, Beach Ball Properties, was available. Um, you can email us at info at beachballproperties.com. You can also email us at reservations at beachballproperties.com. Check out our website, uh, click on a property you like. In the right-hand corner, there's a place where you can put in the calendar, put in your selected dates. It'll tell you whether it's available or whether the price is there. Um, one thing that I do that's a little bit different with some of my competitors is they just put the base rent price, and then when you click on it, and all those fees pop up. Right. Um, we're transparent. When you click in your dates, like you can go on our first page and say June 6th to June 13th, everything that's available during that time will pop up, and the full price is already displayed. So there's no... No question about it when you click on it. It's not going to go from 800 to 1200. You know it's $1200. So you get to make that decision before you click in and read more information on it. And I would say definitely go follow you on Facebook because if there's a cancellation, I mean, there's some crazy deals that come up and they mm-hmm. go like that. I, and I saw one post I think Ginger made and there were people just comment right and left and she finally said it's taken. It is. It yeah. is. That took it yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, when those cancellations happen, and and we try to like you were talking about earlier, like we'll post in New Orleans, we'll post in Jackson, Mississippi, we'll post in Birmingham and in Montgomery, and my hometown of Selma, Alabama. You know, we put it out there, like, hey, here, here's a last minute deal. If you, you know, if you're thinking about jumping on something, this is the time to jump on it. We do like to get it out there. You know, occasionally we do our crazy live videos. You know, our whole thing is to be informative. We'll mm-hmm. go into a new condo and, and we walk through everybody and we show where it is. 
even if it's blistering hot and I'm sweating all over the place. Uh, yeah, the other day I was like, Ginger, do you want to do this video? Because I am so. And she's like, No, 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 you got it. So I was like, oh, That's I'm raw and authentic. Just, just do it. But yeah, that, that's my thing. I want to. I want to be. I want to be real with people. I'm, I'm not. You know. Yeah, you got to sugarcoat it a little bit, but right. not too much. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been awesome. Absolutely. I really appreciate your time. Hunter Harrison, well. Beach Ball Properties. Thank you all for tuning in. Well, that wraps up another Agent 251 podcast. Thanks so much for listening. You can find our show on iTunes. Uh, any place you get your podcast fix, we really appreciate the listening. And please share it with your friends. This show has been paid for and powered by JWRE, Jason Will Real Estate. You can find Jason, Diana, and the whole JWRE team on the internet and Facebook. And uh, everybody, have a great and productive and happy weekend.